I'm Mike, N2MAK. Contests and nets are killing ham radio. Wait, no, that's not right. They're actually a good thing. Let me explain why. Contests and nets can get a bad rap in ham radio. I know I'm not the only one that's been out for a POTA activation on a contest weekend and noticed how overcrowded the bands can become. And if you're QRP, good luck holding on to a frequency without somebody moving in on you. And then certainly we've all had the experience activating a park when somebody hops on frequency to remind us that there's a net about to begin that's been operating for close to a century on the same frequency, yada, yada, yada. But let's focus on the positives. I've used nets and contests to help me grow as an amateur radio operator. It all started with nets as soon as I got my technician license. I used my brand new HT to check into some nets on VHF and, and UHF. It gave me the confidence to overcome mic fright and it got me comfortable with my equipment. As I got new HTs as we all do, I started using those so I would become familiar with how they operate. I learned what repeaters I could hit from inside the house and what ones I had to go outside to use. And when I was out of town, I was able to use Echolink to check into nets, and sometimes I even got lucky with tropo ducting. Local 2 meter and 6 meter nets that were SSB helped me expand beyond FM and learn what's possible with weak signal modes on the higher bands. These nets are what got my son interested in ham radio when he would watch me check in and talk. and. It encouraged him to get his license, his tech, and his general at age 11. He's even served as the net control, which, as you can imagine, works wonders for your confidence when you're a youth in ham radio. My son and I even did our first soda activation together with one of my friends. I stayed up late the night before making speaker wire dipoles so that we could make our first contacts on 2 meter single sideband and 6 meter single sideband. We used the ICOM 705 for the first time, giving us the operate, uh, opportunity to do all band and all mode. We had a blast. And ever since then, I've gone out for the VHF contest, trying to pair it up with a POTA and sometimes even a soda activation. Last January, I did a soda from the same spot, and I managed to finish first place in Western New York second place in the Atlantic operating as a single operator portable QRP. This year in January, I strategically went out to a POTA threefer. That helped me get two more parks towards my POTA six pack award, uh, which is getting contacts, uh, 10 contacts at sifted six different parks on six meters. That's one of my goals for 2024. And speaking of goals, another one of my goals this year was to make contacts and operate using four new modes, or new to me modes. Um, when I first got into amateur radio, I was primarily SSB and FM the first year or so before I branched out and started some digital stuff doing FT8. But um, this year, there was the Ritty Roundup uh, in January, and I used that as an opportunity to uh, learn and do Ritty. Uh, did it during a POTA activation, uh, which coincided with the contest, and uh, and I had a really good time. It was neat. I want to learn it, and uh, I want to do it some more. Uh, on the Ham Radio Clubhouse, Shane earlier this year mentioned he was interested in doing AM. I thought that would be interesting to try out as well, so I decided to go out and do a late shift POTA activation on 40 meters using AM. I had a great time and uh, learned a lot doing it. Uh, I've gone out and, and done it again. And each time I've done it, I get new people that have said this is the first time that they've they've done AM and uh, they seem to be very appreciative. It's, it's always fun to try these new things. If you're interested in AM, I just happened to come across the AM Rally, which is a contest coming up right in the beginning of February. I'll leave some information in the description down below. That could be a great opportunity to uh, spin the dial and make some contacts uh, using AM. Now, whether it's AM, uh, VHF, RIDI, 
CW, you name it. There's no shortages of uh, of contests coming up this year. So uh, keep an eye out. Look at those contest calendars, and maybe you'll find something that'll help uh, encourage you to try out a new mode as well. And speaking of contests, I just finished up Winterfield Day. I was busy this weekend. It didn't work out where I could go out as long as I wanted to. I was only able to come out for the last hour, but I made a point to try something new. Winterfield Day doesn't allow you to use FT8, but JS8 Call you can use. I've never used JS8 Call. I installed it on the computer today. I watched a few videos on it earlier in the week, and I set it up here at the park in the field for the first time, and I was able to make four contacts for Winterfield Day using JS8 Call during that last hour. And in fact, the last one I had a nice little QSO. Uh, not going to win any awards at all uh, for those four contacts, but Winterfield Day encouraged me to try something new, and that's a good thing. Nets and contests aren't going away. We can always just spin the dial, or we can get creative and try to use them to our advantage and help us grow as amateur radio operators. No matter what, though, ham radio is fun. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it encourages you to get out and try new things. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe to my channel, and of course, if you got a comment or question, leave it down below. I'm Mike, N2MAK, 73.